The objective of this experiment is to determine the change in oxidation number of two reducing agents, iron 2 sulfate heptahydrate and tin 2 chloride dihydrate using potassium permanganate. Due to low purity and its reactivity with water, the concentration of potassium permanganate is uncertain. So it must be first standardized against a reducing agent. In this case, sodium oxalate. Safety. Safety glasses or goggles, lab coat, gloves, and closed-toed shoes are needed. Part A. Standardization of potassium permanganate solution. Obtain about 200 milliliters of potassium permanganate solution. First, rinse the burette with three 5 milliliter aliquots of distilled water. Next, use two 5 milliliter aliquots of potassium permanganate to rinse the burette and then fill to approximately the 0, 0.0 mark. Remember, you always rinse your measuring device with whatever it is you are measuring. A white background, such as a paper towel, will make the burette readings easier. Record initial burette reading. Burettes have been set up in the lab to measure two 25 milliliter aliquots of sodium oxalate solution. Use two labeled 250 milliliter flasks. Record the starting and ending burette readings for each sample so that you will know the volume used. Record the concentration of the sodium oxalate solution. To each of the sodium oxalate flasks, add 10 milliliters of 3 molar sulfuric acid solution. The half reactions for the standardization are oxidation. Oxalate goes to two carbon dioxide plus two electrons. Reduction. Permanganate plus eight hydrogen cations plus five electrons goes to manganese plus four waters. The net reaction is two permanganates plus five oxalates plus 16 hydrogen cations goes to two manganese plus 10 carbon dioxides plus eight waters. For this net ionic reaction to occur in a timely manner, the solution must be heated to above 80 degrees C. The carbon dioxide bubbles are quite visible during the titration of sodium oxalate and potassium permanganate. Record the initial burette reading. Remove the oxalate solution from the hot plate. Immediately start titration of the oxalate with the potassium permanganate. Titrate until a faint purple-pink color endpoint, which should persist for at least 30 seconds. Record the ending burette reading. Refill the burette and perform a second titration.
the volumes of potassium permanganate used for the first and second titration of the sodium oxalate should be within 0.2 milliliters. If not, do a third titration. These samples may be disposed of down the sink and flushed with plenty of water. Rinse these flasks with distilled water. They will be used for the next part. Use the data you have obtained to determine the concentration of the potassium permanganate solution. Part B, determination of oxidation number changes for reducing agents. Obtain 125 milliliters of iron 2 sulfate heptahydrate. Record the concentration of the iron 2 sulfate heptahydrate. You will use your 100 milliliter graduated cylinder and not a burette to measure the iron 2 sulfate heptahydrate. Rinse the 100 milliliter graduated cylinder with distilled water and next with two 5 milliliter aliquots of iron 2 sulfate heptahydrate solution. Remember, measuring devices are always rinsed with whatever you will be measuring. Measure out two 50 milliliter aliquots of iron 2 sulfate heptahydrate into two clean, not necessarily dry, 250 milliliter Erlenmeyer flasks. To each flask, add 10 milliliters of 3 molar sulfuric acid solution and 10 milliliters of 3 molar phosphoric acid solution. Mix solutions. Record initial burette reading of the potassium permanganate solution. Titrate until the light purple pink endpoint and record final burette reading. Repeat again for the second iron 2 sulfate heptahydrate sample. These samples may be poured down the drain and flushed down with plenty of water. Rinse the flask with distilled water to be reused. Next, obtain 125 milliliters of the tin 2 chloride dihydrate solution. Record the concentration of the tin 2 chloride dihydrate. Rinse the 100 milliliter graduated cylinder with distilled water and then with two 5 milliliter aliquots of tin 2 chloride dihydrate. Again, you are rinsing with what you are measuring. Measure out two 50 milliliter aliquots of the tin 2 chloride dihydrate into two flasks. Unlike before, do not add sulfuric acid and phosphoric acid. Record initial burette reading of the potassium permanganate solution. Titrate until the light purple pink endpoint and record final burette reading. Repeat again for the second tin to chloride dihydrate sample. Record initial and final burette readings. Don't forget to refill the burette before beginning each titration. Every remaining solution, except potassium permanganate, may be poured down the drain and flushed with plenty of water. Return excess potassium permanganate solution. This is the only solution that may be returned for it will be standardized. Your data table should look like this. The stopcock may need to be removed to clean the burette thoroughly. Leaving any trace of potassium permanganate is why some have a brown stain. 